I'm on mute and my cam my camera's off. How do I turn those back on? You're still you're on mute actually. I'm on mute it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, Are you're you fine. So mute it for me. Okay, we're gonna start the stream now. Good afternoon. My name is Allison Kaplan. I'm director of education at the National First Ladies Library, located at the National First Ladies Historic Site in Canton, Ohio. I'm really excited to be here today. I can hardly believe that the holidays are right around the corner. And before we get started with today's program, I wanna tell you about some upcoming programs presented by the National First Ladies Library that you might be interested in. If you are local to us in the Northeast Ohio area, or if you're traveling for the holidays nearby, you are always welcome to come visit us at the National First Ladies Historic Site, where we collaborate with the National Park Service to bring you amazing exhibitions related to the First Ladies and their lives. Um, right now, we have a great exhibition, Nancy Reagan, An American Story. And coming in the spring, we have an exhibition inspired by Jacqueline Kennedy. So we are super excited about that. Um, and we hope that um, this talk today will make a good uh, combination of those first ladies and help us kick off the new year. We also have a film discussion coming up on December 13th. Patsy Mink ahead of the majority. So you can watch the film via Stark Library's Canopy and join us for a discussion. It's kind of like a book club. Um, December 15th, our talk with the curator uh, is covering the Clinton era Christmas cards. December 19th, First Ladies Night, we're going to be talking to a historian of First Ladies and their needlework, and we're really excited about that. Uh, December 22nd, Colleen is actually going to be back with us as part of a children's program called Fun with Flotus, uh, holiday, holiday Joy with White House Pets. So if you have children or grandchildren, um, you might be interested in joining us. And then next month's legacy lecture, we're very excited. We're kicking off the new year with um, Tilly Lasky and she will be discussing Faithfully Yours, The Lives of Rose Cleveland and Evangeline Simpson Whipple. So those are our upcoming programs. And again, you will be able to access this if you're having issues streaming it. Uh, we are also available on Facebook and YouTube after the fact. Um, so I believe those are all the announcements. We're so happy to have everyone here. And again, I'm able to troubleshoot with you or answer questions in the chat. If you have questions for our speaker today, please share those in the chat or the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end. Um, and without further ado, I want to introduce to you um, friend of the National First Ladies Library, Colleen Christian Burke. Author, designer, and historian Colleen Christian Burke has had the three-time honor of being on the White House holiday decorating team, having served First Ladies Laura Bush and Michelle Obama. In 2014, Colleen served as a White House design partner and began planning the White House holiday decor in February. Colleen is the author of the award-winning book, Christmas with the First Ladies. Um, Colleen Christian Burke's Christmas collection features ornaments and holiday table wire inspired by the First Ladies. And she is also the recipient of the coveted Icon Award, the design industry's mark of excellence. She's partnered with national outlets like Macy's and Bloomingdale's. A lifestyle expert, she has made over 45 national TV appearances, including Good Morning America, CBS Morning Show, CNN News, Fox and Friends, MSNBC, Hallmark, and HGTV. Colleen is considered a foremost White House historian 
and she is a frequent lecturer at the Smithsonian. And everything I've learned about Christmas at the White House, I have learned from Colleen. So I am very excited to have Colleen back um, again this year to talk to us about Christmas at the White House and most specifically about Nancy Reagan and Jacqueline Kennedy. So thank you, Colleen. We're so happy to have you here and I'm gonna turn things over to you. Excellent, thank you so very much. I am so excited to be here. Uh, Jackie and Nancy, two of my favorite first ladies, they certainly put their stamp on White House Christmas decorating. And what I love about both of them is they were very public and very private and uh, both families have uh, donated all of those pictures to share with us, the American public. So I think I'd really um, love to jump right in. And I'm going to start with my love of Christmas decorating. I started as a White House Christmas decorator as a volunteer. Sometimes I joke that I campaigned longer than some presidents to get on the White House Christmas decorating team. And this picture was taken the very first day that I was in the White House as a volunteer decorator. It is in the East Room, which is the party room. And what really surprised me about White House Christmas decorating was how much the First Lady was on the floor with us decorating. And this picture was taken in 2008. My first time I served First Lady Laura Bush. It was a very patriotic Christmas. Um, but what I kind of got really curious about was other First Ladies. How was this beautiful East Room used by other First Ladies? And I started doing some research and what I found was that every First Lady has kind of shared decorating ideas, has created their own decorating legacy and really worked very, very hard to bring a Christmas holiday experience to the American public. And when I was in the White House decorating, there was all this chatter. And a lot of the chatter was about Jackie Kennedy, because Jackie Kennedy was the first first lady who said that we should have a Christmas theme. Now, Mrs. Kennedy was all about a polished presentation. We know that she renovated the White House. She was very fashion forward. And she brought that same stylistic eye to the White House decor. You know, if we're gonna have 100,000 people over for the holidays, maybe we should put some thought into it. The very first Christmas theme was the Nutcracker. Uh, this was the Kennedy's first Christmas. And what I love about it is just the simplicity. This actual, this particular tree was in the cross hall in the grand foyer and all of the ornaments were miniature. The Nutcracker was the theme. And I think the, um, the thing about Jackie Kennedy was that she used miniatures and really no other first lady has done that. And I think that's because the size and the scale of White House trees are so grand that the bigger the ornament, the faster the job gets done. So here we have Jackie in a beautiful Christmas dress with President Kennedy. And while the tree is beautiful, it's not quite as elaborate or as stylized as we might expect from Mrs. Kennedy. It was a much simpler time. Here is the same tree in black and white. So when you think about the trees that we see today at the White House, gosh, there's something like 77 of them. And uh, it's really a, a winter wonderland with a number of trees, especially here uh, in this particular area. Um, but this was Mrs. Kennedy's tree. The Kennedys had two Christmases in the White House. The second Christmas theme was a children's tree. And again, Mrs. Kennedy brought back her very simple miniature ornaments. We see some candy canes hanging on the tree. We see some snowflakes. But again, a very, very simplistic interpretation of Christmas. And just another shot of the tree in the blue room. Today, and probably, I don't know, for the past at least three decades, the official, and actually might even, yeah, 
maybe even four decades, the official Christmas tree is in the blue room. And this was Mrs. Kennedy's um, attempt at having the tree in the blue room. The, the blue ribbon, there's lots of uh, discussion about that amongst decorators and historians. Is it cray paper? We think it might be cray, cray paper. Is it ribbon? We're not really sure. If it's ribbon, it's not expensive ribbon. Again, Things that are used in the White House are often very intentionally um, something that you can copy in your own house. It would be accessible to the average American, or it's just what's accessible and kind of captures a snapshot of what's happening in current day society. And you will also see on this tree, there's lots of little artificial candles on the branches. Then we have young Caroline Kennedy taking a peek at this same tree. And you'll notice I'm kind of going back and forth between black and white and color. One of the reasons I started my book with Mrs. Kennedy had to do with color photography. Color photography really was coming into its own in the early 60s. We still have some black and white. It was also, you know, the jumping off point of the Christmas theme. So that was a really kind of obvious place to start a book about First Lady Christmas decorating. And then finally, to give you an idea about Christmas in terms of preserving it through photographs and images, it's really changed through the years. The Kennedys were the first family to have a presidential photographer. In fact, President Kennedy's dad paid for the photographer to chronicle his son's presidency. And since that time, it's actually become a, an actual um, government position. But during the Kennedy time, they funded the photographer and then they dedicated and donated all the photos to um, the American public, which is why we get to see them today. Well, folks, it doesn't get much more simple than this. Um, very, very kind of minimal Christmas decor. So we do have a little bit of greens up around the chandelier. We have two very thin kind of spindly, not even well-shaped trees uh, on either side of the columns there. And we are peeking through that doorway through is to the blue room and the official tree. Here we are in the East room. This is the party room. Uh, the very first picture that I showed at the beginning of the presentation was the East Room. Again, I guess kind of skinnier trees were all the rage that year. Uh, not even decorated, you know, just standing there green. In the window, we do see a beautiful floral arrangement. Mrs. Kennedy did decorate with lots of flowers. And oftentimes the flowers were very simple. Uh, they would be... Um, many first ladies actually even favor carnations and Mrs. Kennedy did as well. So here we are in the state dining room. Again, a different day, a different age. When you think about Mrs. Kennedy was the one who kicked off the whole White House decorating craze. And these decorations are very understated. I particularly love the greens around the portrait of Abraham Lincoln. I do think they're a little light on the mantelpiece. Uh, and I think in general, they're just very understated. We do have the red candles and the candelabra, but if you look, one or two might even be crooked. So um, these days, Christmas decor is executed with a much finer eye towards detail. In the East Room, in the middle of our picture here, this is actually a creche. It is a uh, it was a gift from a family in New Jersey. So it's a nativity scene. It's kind of hard to see in this picture. And at the base of it, kind of like those levels that you're seeing at the base, those are all live azaleas. And so probably there's maybe four or five rows of azaleas before you actually get to the carved nativity um, figurines. And this is considered a great national treasure. It is um, from Italy, it's hundreds of years old. And the reason it's allowed to be displayed, and it is displayed even till this year in the East Room, is because it is a national treasure. It is a piece of art. And so in that way, we kind of, um, you know, we thread the needle of how do you have religion present it at the White House? How do you cross church and state? And because this is considered a great work of art, 
it's been displayed proudly there every year in the East Room. And different first ladies have treated this differently. Mrs. Kennedy had it very small. Mrs. Carter had it very large. But this is an actual you know, iconic piece of Christmas decor that Mrs. Kennedy brought out that other first ladies have built upon. So it's really a traditional piece. And this is, I probably should have talked about it a little bit more when we saw this picture, because you can actually see the azaleas. Maybe you can see some of the, the angels and the Joseph and the Mary. I have been there when they rope off the area to bring these people out. Uh, this, these pieces out and the curator brings out her white gloves and it's all very um, prim and proper and treat it as if it is a treasure, which it is. One of the things that Mrs. Kennedy loved doing was hosting parties for children. And she started a Christmas tradition called the children, the diplomatic children's Christmas tea. And every year invite it to the White House to this very uh, fancy party for young children were the diplomats children. And it's so funny as years went by, the diplomats themselves were trying to come along um, with their children, but the White House was very, very strict, children only. You can see how just precious this is, you know, a White House Christmas party. Um, if you look above the table, that's actually, uh, I think it was, um, a certain order of sisters that came and helped host the party. So that she almost looks like a flying nun there towards, towards the back in the blue robe. And in fact, Mrs. Kennedy hosted this party. She planned the party, but she actually wasn't there. Her sister-in-law, Ethel, stepped in and acted as host the day of because the Kennedys, like many first families, didn't actually spend Christmas in the White House. Here's another look of the diplomatic children's party. And again, we have a window to a simpler time. Balloons tied to the chair. That's something that could be in any American's home. The, the little Santa centerpiece sitting on greens in the, in the center of the table. It's simple, it's charming, it's nostalgic. And I love that this was a White House party. When I mentioned that the Kennedys did not spend Christmas uh, at the White House, you maybe were wondering, well, where did they spend it? Mrs. Kennedy favored spending Christmas in Palm Beach. And when I first started researching my book, I was sent a series of pictures, this being one of them, that when I saw the picture, it really captured my heart. I mean, Mrs. Kennedy holding John John. I have Caroline there over by the fireplace. You know, this was our first lady who was known for style, but we have these super haphazard stockings hung that maybe President Kennedy had something to do with. Uh, and I just was, I was drawn into the picture, but I felt like I was seeing something so intimate and so special that I thought it was sent to me by mistake. So I called the, the librarian, the historian at the Kennedy Library, and I said, I think you sent me their family pictures. And she said, I did. I did send you their family pictures. But these are pictures that the Kennedy family donated to the national public. And folks, these to me are just um, really intimate really special and talk about seeing our first families in a very, very different way. So there we have Jackie, she's got her pearls on, the kids are dressed up, the stockings are not hung by care with care, but they are up. And here we have Jackie on the floor. Um, today we would call that crisscross applesauce. You can see her flip-flops. You can see, if I can direct your attention to the tree. Um, talk about a haphazard tree. When I saw that tree, I thought, it just struck me as so funny because when I thought of Jacqueline Kennedy, that was not the tree that I pictured, but sure does speak of Christmas love and Christmas fun and kind of the craziness of Christmas. So you get a second view of the tree. You have Ke President Kennedy. He's in his rocking chair. You have Jackie way off to the side. Again, you can't see. I know because I've stared at these photos and studied them, but she was actually smoking a cigarette in this photo. John John is dressed up. Caroline is dressed up. We have a family friend here. And I do want to direct your attention to the angel hanging by the fireplace. So take a look 
I, it's so crazy. I like to have a pointer, but I, you can't really on Zoom over the fireplace. Just remember that kind of angel and how she is um, hanging in the air there. And we'll talk about that a little later. President Kennedy handing young John John his stocking. I love that there's some toys on the floor, maybe a loose ornament. Again, this is just a way to see our first families as real people. And I actually joke when I'm in person with folks, I always say, and let's take a second to look at President Kennedy's fashion. And I really think we do not want the white sock loafer look to catch on. So um, while I love this picture and I find his fashion really, really funny, I always say, warning, do you, don't let your husband or your boyfriend see this because they might want to copy that look. And how about this? President Kennedy on the floor playing with the kids. I've never seen a president laying on the floor playing with kids. And it just... It's it to me, it's just so real. It's so kind of like emotional. It pulls on your heartstrings and it lets us know that while our first ladies are curating the Christmas experience, their own private Christmas experience is probably a lot like those that we've all taken part of. And here, you know, if uh if, those, if the type of Christmas pictures that we had today were available back in 1961, 62, this may have been you know, the Kennedy family Christmas picture. We have Jackie. If you look closely, John John is now wearing his mom's flip-flop. Uh, Lee Rat as well and her husband are off to the side. And you know they have, they have a couple pets in the picture. So super, super fun. That angel that I told you to look at on the fireplace is now over on the table by the lamp. And just remember that because we're gonna talk about that again. But I think this picture captures Christmas energy, right? We all know that craziness. We all know kind of the decorations thrown on the tree, some haphazard ribbon hanging around. And just, there's a lot of joy in this picture. And I, I like to remember the Kennedys this way. This was the Kennedy Christmas card in 1962. The horse pulling the sleigh, of course, was macaroni. And what is very um, not so clear, but once I tell you, you'll of course see it, is that Mrs. Kennedy, John John, and Caroline were riding in the sleigh and it was pulled across the White House lawn. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful Christmas card. Remember that angel? Well, in 1963, Mrs. Kennedy teamed up with Hallmark and she designed two different Christmas cards that were actually sold in Hallmark stores. And they sold out very, very quickly. And this was uh, the angel. And it was inspired by that angel that we saw hanging on the fireplace. Mrs. Kennedy definitely was an artist, liked to think of herself as a little bit of a folk artist. And um, I just kind of love the color that she chose, kind of a pastel color, the way that she captured something that was you know, something that was involved in her Christmas holiday experience. The other card that she um, designed was the Three Wise Men. And I just, you know, after these two cards, she never designed anymore. And, you know, if, if I had my wish, she would have designed one every year because I thought they were just lovely. The Christmas card for 1963 actually was a photograph of the creche that we discussed in the, um, in the East Room. And this is actually a very sad Christmas card. These were printed. Many of them were written out, even addressed. A few were even mailed before President Kennedy was assassinated. Of course, once he was assassinated, uh, these cards, the majority of them were destroyed. So there are only a few of them around. And of course, very, very valuable. Uh, and it marked a, a very, very sad Christmas. And so what I'd like to do is maybe talk about something a little bit more lighthearted than that terrible tragic time for our nation, for our first family, the Kennedys. 
when I was researching Mrs. Kennedy and their Christmases in Palm Beach, it came to my attention that the first lady had a very kind of fascinating Christmas tradition. And that was once the presents were open, once they had gone to church, once Christmas breakfast was over, what did our first lady do? She went water skiing every Christmas. Can you imagine? So this picture was taken from really far away, but our technology has gotten better over the years because when I was shown this picture 10 years ago, we couldn't even tell where Mrs. Kennedy was. So now if you look against the boat, kind of directly under the flag, you will see a figure in a blue bathing suit. And that my friends is Jackie Kennedy water skiing on Christmas day. And that's a little bit more of a close up of her. Um, but can you imagine? And I, I guess I would challenge everybody on the Zoom, myself included. Let's try to think outside the box this Christmas day and maybe find ourselves a pair of water skis. Uh, never crossed my mind. I've never done it before, um, but Jackie Kennedy did. And that's kind of why I love her because she set us off on our Christmas journey in terms of White House Christmas decorating. She preserved really fun and kind of adventurous Christmases for her own family. And she certainly also inspired Nancy Reagan, who we are going to talk about next. So the Reagan's first Christmas, 1981, in the White House was unofficially themed gratitude. And that is because President Reagan had also the year before um, you know, he had survived an assassination attempt himself. So it was quite amazing that uh, both of these first families had to deal with that type of uh, violence against them. One of the things that we see often is the arrival of the official White House tree, which we know goes into the Blue Room. We know that the chandelier is taken down in the Blue Room, so this monster of a tree can go right through the portico doors straight back into the Blue Room. It does arrive by horse and buggy, and it's certainly a lot of ceremony. And I just think Mrs. Reagan really brought it with that green Christmas coat. And this is just a fun part of the ceremony, always kicking off the Christmas season. Just like the Kennedys took pictures in front of the Christmas tree, every first couple will take a picture in front of the Christmas tree. It's this funny kind of crazy two shot. Again, we're in the blue room. Uh, what I love about this one is if you look at Mrs. Reagan's shoes, she's glued some red pom-poms to her shoes, and she calls those her, um, her Christmas shoes. And in fact, I thought they were kind of hokey. I thought they were kind of, I don't know, you know, maybe not the most fashion forward, but I thought to myself, if First Lady Nancy Reagan can glue some pom-poms on her shoes, I'm going to try it. And I, I will tell you folks, it is a lot of fun. So I highly recommend if you come across some red pom-poms in the craft store, just think about hot gluing them to your shoes and you too can dress like Nancy Reagan. What's really fun about the First Ladies, and it also, I think this is a little bit with how many Christmases they have at the White House. Sometimes we'll see our first ladies in very formal gowns in front of the tree. And then sometimes we'll see them in more like what Mrs. Reagan is wearing here, the cocktail attire. We know that Nancy Reagan loved the color red. So Christmas was really her season. And here she is in another red suit. She is standing, um, the, where she's standing, the stairs that she's standing on are actually the stairs to the private quarters where the first family lives. So if you see kind of where the tree is, that's heading towards where the first family is. Where she's standing at the banister, lots of times first ladies will speak from there. You'll see this decorated different ways. Mrs. Reagan did love angels. Mrs. Reagan really, all of her Christmases kind of play together her Christmas themes. And most of them started with an old fashioned Christmas for maybe an old fashioned Christmas for children, an old fashioned Christmas with teddy bears. You can see that this first lady loved the traditional red Christmas flowers. She loved lots of greens and she loved making it fun for children. Here we have Nancy Reagan um, 
like on a ladder. As I said, I was stunned to see the first ladies decorating when I saw Mrs. Bush and later Mrs. Obama really involved in the Christmas decor. And here we have Nancy Reagan. She brought a lot of kind of glam and glitz to the White House. And I'd like to point out these gold snowflakes thousands of them were made. And Mrs. Reagan did not call on professional designers and decorators. She had a very well-known pro program, Just Say No to Drugs. And there was a drug rehabilitation facility called Second Genesis. And Mrs. Reagan called on folks at Second Genesis who were getting treatment for addiction to come and decorate the White House. And in an interview, one of them said that the first lady you know, who presides over the most important house in the land, put her faith in us to decorate the White House. It was such a, a boost of confidence that it just made them feel so much better about themselves and made them feel that they could go on to overcome their addiction. And members of Second Genesis were part of the decorating almost the entire time that Mrs. Reagan was First Lady. So Nancy, very, very aware of kind of how photos were taken, how the White House should look, how it should be communicated to the American public. And so can you see her over there so kind of miniature and dwarfed behind the sleigh? She is in the East Room. Every year for the last several decades, there have been four 15 foot trees in the East Room. A snowy look is very, very popular. In fact, sometimes you'll hear, I read a story during um, Barbara Bush's administration that the volunteer decorators actually had themselves a little bit of a snowball fight with some of the materials that you use to decorate. Uh, but these trees are certainly laden with snow and sparkling lights. And in addition to a tiny Mrs. Reagan, I wanna bring your attention to the sleigh. That is the sleigh that drew Caroline and her mom and John John across the White House lawn in that Christmas photo that we saw. And this sleigh has been used by many first ladies in many different areas within the White House. And just here we have a, a close up of the sleigh. And there are fireplaces in the East Room and they have these beautiful you know, really large mirrors above them. And this must have been a Mother Goose uh, Christmas, one of Mrs. Reagan's themes, because I think I see a cow jumping over the moon over there in the fireplace. This is uh, looking from the cross hall foyer. So to my left above this French sofa is that banister that we saw Mrs. Reagan standing at and looking straight back past the chandelier there we have the creche that we saw Mrs. Kennedy in front of that was the Kennedy Christmas card and here we have Mrs. Reagan displaying it. As I mentioned Mrs. Reagan was very aware of um photographs of television. The White House did specials with NBC and other national outlets to share the decorations with the American public. And I love Mrs. Reagan because I love, I love pictures and I love that she captured kind of you know, the charm and the joy of Christmas in her preparation. And here she's signing a tag on a Christmas gift. Um, but I also like to think of them as photo ops. So here we have photo op number one. Nancy signing a package. Photo op two, the couple looking lovingly holding a present in front of a tree. And I think that's in the private quarters. And here we are, we have them decorating the tree. So Mrs. Reagan was aware of her husband's legacy, very much the way Mrs. Kennedy was aware of her husband's legacy. And she worked to make sure that that was captured for all of us to share and future generations to see. President Reagan is decorating the tree here. Popcorn strung, remember when that was all the rage, I think in the late 70s and the, the 80s. And one of the interesting things about President Reagan was he was allergic 
uh, he was allergic to Christmas trees. Both he and President Clinton had allergies. And so what the compromise was, because both presidents insisted that there still be live greens and live trees in the White House, the compromise was in the West Wing, they would have more artificial trees so that the presidents wouldn't be sneezing their way through the holiday season. The gingerbread house. Jackie Kennedy had a gingerbread house in the White House, but it was a gift that was given to her. Later, it was Pat Nixon who introduced this little A-frame style of a gingerbread house, a very, a very traditional, simple ginger. I mean, that's not simple, but simple by today's standards, gingerbread house. And it was Nancy Reagan who really kind of opened up Pandora's box. Mrs. Reagan went to the, the chief a uh, pastry chef and said, you know what? For Ronnie, could we just maybe like mix it up a little bit and maybe have a little jelly bean path? And that little jelly bean path, my friends, totally changed White House gingerbread history. I'm sure you've seen the gingerbread houses today, um, how they are enormous. They're 350, 400 pounds. They start making them uh, you know, in the summer before. And it was Mrs. Reagan that we really have to think for the, thank for that because she was the one who said, we can get more creative, we can mix this up. Mrs. Reagan was also known for having celebrity Santas come to the White House. And over here, I'm just noticing that this fellow, this Santa with the cowboy hat was actually Larry Hagman from the hit TV show, Dallas. So it's kind of funny that he crept into that uh, the frame right there. And of course, the Reagan family dog. Mr. T came to the White House uh, and he brought with him some Mr. T dolls to give to all of the children who came to the White House that day. Um, as I mentioned, you know, Mrs. Reagan was just very, very aware of pop culture, of uh, they were from Hollywood. She had many Holly Hollywood friends come to the White House along with family. And during the, you know, the Reagan years, of which there were eight Christmases, um, it was really a, a cosmopolitan center. But let's take a look at the tree behind Mr. T a very simple tree. Again, we see the white, the white candles kind of that were favored by Mrs. Kennedy. We see some angels hanging on the tree, but this tree also is very understated compared to the Christmas trees that we see today in the White House. Every year there was a celebrity Santa and this year, Mrs. Reagan was surprised by the president himself. So it's the president hiding under that hat. Ronnie and Nancy also loved mistletoe. So we have, we, we've seen um, anecdotes that, you know, he would steal a kiss under the mistletoe whenever he caught her there. And just to prove to you, the president liked to dress up like Santa. Here he is again on a different occasion. Mrs. Uh, Reagan, used to say, she had a favorite saying, I must confess, I still believe in Santa Claus. And I think what she was saying was she believed in the joy, she believed in the Christmas magic, and she wanted to share it with all of us. So Jackie Kennedy had the children's diplomatic tea. Mrs. Reagan carried on the tradition. So here they are in the state dining room, and these were the children of diplomats. And over the years, the custom evolved so that they would come in the traditional garb of their country. And I think we're getting towards the end of our slides. The Reagans had a um, antique circus train that ran around the base of the tree one year. It was placed on greens. It was on loan from the Smithsonian. Often our first ladies will borrow things from the National Archives or the Smithsonian or other uh, museums, especially American folk museums. They love to feature American crafts. They love to feature, you know, American treasures. But they also feature things that are very simple. And if you look close on this tree, I can see a paper chain made out of gold paper that went all the way around. Mrs. Reagan also one year did something that you may have done in your own home. She recycled the Christmas cards that they had received the year before. I think the president and the first lady got something like 50,000 Christmas cards one, one year. And 
Uh, just like you may have done in your own home, Mrs. Reagan and the volunteers, they, they hole punched them, put a ribbon through them and they hang them on the tree. And that was part of the Christmas charm that year. Mrs. Reagan loved music. It probably was a throwback to her, you know, being very involved in the arts as an actress. And one year they had, you know, um, you know, folks dressed up as Dickens from the Dickens uh, A Christmas Story and come and, and perform at the White House. Musical groups are very popular at the White House and it is really considered an honor if you are able to uh, perform for the First Lady, perform for folks who are coming in maybe to view a party. It's a lot of fun. And that brings us to our final slide. So um, this is just a snowy view of the outside of the White House. And I would love to answer any questions. If you guys have any questions, I can answer questions about Mrs. Reagan or uh, Mrs. Kennedy or my own Christmas decorating experience. So the floor is wide open. Thank you so much, Colleen. Um, one of the questions I have for you is in relation to the um, assassination of President Kennedy. So it happened over the holidays and I wondered how uh, decorating the White House was handled at that time. What did Lady Bird Johnson do? So can you imagine being faced with moving into the White House under such a turbulent time, such an emotional time. And this was actually a great challenge for Lady Bird Johnson. So she, like Mrs. Kennedy, wore black morning clothes up until Christmas Eve. And on Christmas Eve, she made a conscious decision that that was going to be a turning point for the country. And she took off the black morning suit. She put on a, a red Christmas suit and they went out and with the groundskeepers, they clipped greens from the White House lawn and they brought them in. And it was a very simple, elegant, maybe more spiritual Christmas at the White House that year. And then prior to, right prior to bringing in those greens, funeral bunting was all around the, the White House. It was over the doorways, it was near the fireplaces. So all of that was removed on Christmas Eve and they went on to, to turn a page for the nation. Very interesting. Um, can you speak about, um, it was really interesting to see the sleigh be reused and recycled. I wondered if you can talk of other instances where objects have been reused by first ladies, um, whether they're coming from the Kennedy or um, Reagan administration or other first ladies. So just to speak to the sleigh a little bit more, when I started as a volunteer in 2008, that sleigh, I wasn't aware of its history. It was put in the, um, the entranceway down by the, the, the downstairs cross hall where you enter to come into the White House. And that year was a red, white, and blue patriotic Christmas. And uh, Mrs. Bush had someone create uh, a life-size Uncle Sam you know, in the traditional Uncle Sam garb and Uncle Sam was riding in the sleigh and I was so taken with the sleigh, but I had no idea of the whole backstory. So you can imagine how excited I became as I started seeing it in different First Lady photographs through the years. There's another very special collection called the State Flower Ball Ornaments that were um, from the time of Mrs. Nixon. And Mrs. Nixon left these ornaments behind. And what they were, uh, in, a, in an attempt to bring, you know, average everyday Americans into the White House decorating and planning, she commissioned some very um, unassuming Americans, they were all handicapped, to create one ball from each of the states. And on the front of it, so kind of in the style of the 1960s, late 60s, they were covered in velvet. And then they very simply took an artificial flower and they pushed it into the, a styrofoam ball and it hung on the tree. Prior to Mrs. Nixon, most first ladies took their ornaments home with them and they either hung in their personal homes or they went to their presidential libraries. But this particular collection representing Americans from 50 states representing the states were left behind. And as I was researching the book, I kept seeing them show up in the pictures. 
There they were with Mrs. Clinton. There they were with Mrs. Reagan. You know, that one picture that we saw with all the, the foil um, snowflakes on it, one of the state flower balls was on that picture. And so this collection was reused many, many times. Mrs. Obama used them. And I was very, very curious, you know, where were they? And could I get some more pictures of them? And for some time we couldn't, you know, I, I contacted the National Archives, the Smithsonian, no one quite knew where these were. And one day I came across them in the warehouse, just unceremoniously in a box on a shelf. And because they were, you know, at that time, maybe 50, 55 years old, they were starting to come apart. And it's my understanding um, that some love and care has been given to them and they will continue to be used over and over. Um, there is another interesting question here that I do not, not know the answer for. Um, I do. <laughs> as far as the, the holiday decor goes, is, is there outside funds that are raised for that or does it come out of a uh, First Lady White House budget? So it's kind of interesting. The way it is funded now, whatever the prevailing party is. So if the president is a Republican, it comes from the National Republican Committee. If the Republican, if it's a Democrat, it's the Democratic National Committee. And those numbers are not released how much they are spending. Many things are on loan. Many things are repurposed and reused now. There's quite a stockpile in the, in the warehouse where we keep these things. But I will tell you, uh, when Mrs. Ford came in, she wanted to have a very American Christmas, and she wanted everything to come from the States, and she found this fabric that was American made, I believe it was Virginia, from Virginia, and she loved it. She used yards and yards of this fabric, and it was a very homespun, homey Christmas. There were felt ornaments that were sewn and hung on the tree, but one enterprising reporter realized that Mrs. Uh, Ford was spending quite a bit of money. And in fact, she spent more money than Mrs. Nixon, Lady Bird Johnson, and Mrs. Kennedy combined. And the press had a field day with her. And the kicker of the whole thing is she spent $1,600. So you can imagine by today's standard, $1,600 seems like, you know, very economical for the entire White House. Uh, but in those days, it was not. So I believe kind of you know, ever since she was really called on the carpet about the White House decor, it's been funded through charitable donations and they really do not discuss the money. Can you answer a question about China? There are two questions on here about whether or not first ladies have specific China that they use for the holidays. So, uh, I can and I can't. I, I don't want to mislead you that I am an expert on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know that the President Monroe's China collection, which has a lot of gold detailing in it, has been favored by different first ladies over the years and used. I do know in the China room, they put on display different China that has, you know, been purchased and used by the first families. And that's, it's more of a museum down there because you're, you're looking at it. They're not really using it so much. Uh, but that is probably the extent of my knowledge on the China. I have two more questions for you. Um, we know that you started your career um, related to uh, white, the White House uh, Christmas by becoming a volunteer to decorate the White House. So we are wondering if you can tell us some of the ins and outs of becoming a volunteer. So I will, I will tell you everything I know. <laughs> um, I will say it has become a lot more streamlined. And I think it's because of all of the attention. I think Americans have kind of fallen in love with this idea of decorating the White House at Christmas and being part of it. And I always thought in my heart, if I could just hang one ornament, and then I was lucky enough to literally hang, you know, thousands of ornaments at the White House. The, the key is to keep your eye on the official White House website, which is whitehouse.gov. And every first lady is a little bit different, but I would just bookmark this website and I would start looking at it maybe, you know, 
the May, June area because they will put up an electronic application now. And it basically says White House Holiday Volunteer Application. And it, they do ask you a couple of questions and they do give you the opportunity to share a few pictures of your work. But what are they looking for? Sure, they are looking for some people who maybe are professional designers or, or floral uh, designers, florists, because that certainly comes into helping, you know, pull everything together. But they are also looking for everyday Americans who represent things that are special to the first lady. So the military, if you have military service, if you have a history of military service in your family, that always helps you go to the front of the line. They love teachers. They love folks who have given to their community in significant ways. If I were looking to do it now, I might look at what some of Mrs. Biden's causes are because that might play into what she wants to use in the decor. And if you have a connection to that, that might make your application stand out. I do know they get many, many, many applications now. And I just always say, if you're not in it, you can't win it. It's like hitting the lottery. I felt like I hit the lottery. Sometimes people say, are you going to play, you know, Powerball? I'm like, I already hit the lottery. I got to go to the White House. There's no harm in trying. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. The application itself, I, it's like a one page application. Uh, I do, I will share with you, they will run a background check on you. So obviously if there are any issues in your background that would disqualify you. But I would just think about what makes me what makes me special what makes me part of our american fabric what makes me part of the american picture what am i proud of as a citizen and then i would put that forth in the application and then i would put it forth every single year i wouldn't stop trying i will also say they do like to pull from the entire united states so if you're in alaska you have a much better chance than if you're in washington dc it's just kind of the geography of the whole thing Thank you. Her, okay. I will also say there's about, there can be anywhere from like 80 to 100 volunteers. It, it really depends on the first lady and how big she wants the team to be. Thank you for the pro tips, Colleen. Um, one other question I have, and it came up in the chat and you kind of addressed it a little in relation to talking about um, photography, but your book and your research has spanned Jackie Kennedy to Michelle Obama or more contemporary first ladies. Um, have you thought about going back and looking at earlier traditions? I have come back and looked at earlier traditions. A lot of, and, and there is some black and white photography. And mm -hmm. you will also see, um, you know, it's, it's sparse. So when we're, when we're trying to study holiday celebrations, specifically Christmas prior to Mrs. Kennedy, there just aren't really as many photos there for you to see. So you're more reading about it in historical documents and anecdotally, lots of black and white. You will see a lot of, you know, you know, evergreens in the White House. And sometimes it almost looks like a forest in there, <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, White House Christmas decor has certainly evolved over the years and become more refined, even as it's become on a grander scale. Um, but it's, uh, it, you know, there, there are pictures out there. It would just be a different type of book. The book that I wrote, I love the background history and I love the stories that I read about and was able to share with others. But when I put the pictures in the book, I really feel like the first families are telling the story themselves. And that's why I was drawn to that. I also want to share with you, it, it, when I started my book, and my book is 11 years old now, so I probably started it like 12 and a half years ago. At the time, I only had 24 pictures to look at of the Kennedy administration. Fast forward to the Nixons, there were 800,000 photos, and most of them were contact sheets. By the time I got to Mrs. Clinton, there were 2 million pictures. And you can imagine it's just exploded today with our cell phones and, and the television coverage. Uh, so while I was really struggling with the few pictures of the Kennedy 
administration, I was also struggling with the millions of pictures of the later administration. It was, it was kind of a really uh, challenging project to bring it all together and have them all be equal. And I will share with you in um, researching this particular presentation today, I was happy to find that more pictures of the Kennedys uh, existed. Some of the ones that I showed you today of the of the East Room, of the holiday table set up, that wasn't available 11 years ago, and, and now it's into the mix. So I do think our historians are constantly going back um, and taking a second look at what's there and seeing what they can share with us and, and make available. One last question for you. Are there any best um, design practices or recommendations you have for people out there um, in decorating their own homes for the holidays inspired by the first ladies? So I learned a lot of lessons, which I now seem so obvious in retrospect. When I start my decorating, I kind of pull out what I call my first lady kit. And it starts with an apron with a pocket. And this, my friends, is a game changer if you're not using it because you can keep your scissors in there. You can, what do I keep in mind? I have scissors. What they use at the White House more than anything uh, is wire. So if an ornament comes with any type of, you know, little hook that is maybe not very sturdy, because remember also the first ladies are hanging really big things on the tree. Um, we reinforce it, we get rid of those hooks, we put our own wire on. And so I will always have wire cutters, I will always have wire. Uh, one of the things that first ladies love to do, they love to do what we call bundle. And this makes decorating the tree go really fast. So maybe you put three balls on the same piece of wire, twist it and you put the whole thing into the tree. Maybe you put a specialty ornament on that and two plain Christmas balls. But wire and grouping your ornaments is a very fundamental First Lady White House practice. And then my, my pro tip that I cannot do without is I use candle wax because whenever something just won't maybe lay where I want it to lay or won't, you know, um, I try to put it in a perfect place and then it just won't stay. A little bit of candle wax usually saves the day and the cleanup can be a little bit sticky, but it's not like duct tape or, or hot glue that can't be removed. Well, I am definitely gonna take that bundle tip and use it for sure next year. Um, I wanna thank you, Colleen Christian Burke for joining us today and sharing so much knowledge and history and amazing behind the scenes photos of the White House at Christmas inspired by Jackie Kennedy and Nancy Reagan. Um, I hope that you all have a happy holiday season. If you don't get to see us um, for another program before the year is out or come visit us in person. And again, I can't more highly recommend Christmas with the First Ladies, Colleen's book. It has been my Christ, my Christmas Bible um, every December for planning programs and activities around the holidays. So thank you so much, Colleen. This was really wonderful. So I just wanna say thank you also for having me. I love being with you guys, sharing my favorite subject. Um, if anyone would like to follow me, I have one last slide. That's my Instagram, at by Colleen. And I just would love to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and happy holidays and uh, hope to see you all at the White House. Thank you so much. Have a great day.